Chapter 38 Tatiana and Sergei None of us stands a chance against Strahd, Henry said, kicking a rock into the lake. It was morning, and Davian had just arrived to meet them on the northern shore of Lake Zarevich. The were-raven had come alone. Elvir, he told them, and the other keepers, needed to protect their families from the hordes of skeletons and ghouls that were wreaking havoc across the valley. Navara, tell Davian what you saw, Henry said. Navara sat on a large rock, looking out at the water. A dragon, she said. Strahd went to Argenvostolt. He cast some kind of spell on the mausoleum. Bolts of lightning fell from the sky, striking the dome until all the bones of Argenvost rose from the grave and came forth. Strahd's created a dracolich. Davian shrugged his shoulders, and the various metal trinkets on his cloak jingled. It's to be expected. Strahd is preparing for your arrival. And why shouldn't he? He knows you three are powerful. We're powerful? Henry asked sarcastically. Did you not hear what Navara said? Strahd just raised a fucking dragon from the dead. What hope do we have? Not just against this new abomination, but against him. He's been acquiring magic for centuries. His powers are beyond anything we can throw at him. Henry shook his head, feeling the burden of all the souls in Barovia crying out to him for justice. But how could he save them? They would slip through his fingers just as Navara had, just as Irina had. A bolt of lightning struck the lake. Victor! Rowan scolded. What? I'm trying to catch some breakfast. Aren't you hungry? You're going to give away our position, Rowan said. Victor put his hands on his hips and gave her a frank look. You really think Straw doesn't already know where you are? Rowan rolled her eyes. Just stop. Go look for fungus or something. Davian turned to Henry. Don't you know who you are? The were-raven said. Don't all of you? He looked around at each dejected face. Rowan! He rested his gaze on the druid. Her brow was creased with worry. I saw you fell that tree blight. I saw you rise from the dead after being slain by Strahd himself. The mountain folk fear your name, and the elves revere it. You are a daughter of the valley, the last hope of your people, and Barovia has long awaited your return. The sun shone through the trees, lighting Rowan's face. The fear in her eyes was gone. Davian turned to the warlock hunched on the rock, holding her legs close to her chest. Navara, he said. Elvir was there watching when you took on the coven of hags at the windmill. Muriel was there when you fought Babali Saga. Do you know how many more innocents those villains would have killed if you had not stopped them? And if it had not been for you, none of the fanes would be consecrated. The gems from the winery would still be lost to our enemies. Navara, your spirit is a breath of fresh air in this stifled land. You were the first to believe things could change, and you convinced me they could change. Now I'll ask you what you once asked me. Will you help us free Barovia? Will you complete the task you set out to do? Navara sniffed. Then she hopped off the rock and threw her arms around the old were-raven. Of course I will, no matter what it takes. Navara let go and gave Davian a nod. Finally, Davian looked up at Henry. If you think Strahd has spent centuries amassing power... Do you think the Morning Lord has been idle all of this time? Do you think it was chance that led you to draw that sword from the stone? Many souls have been reincarnated in Barovia time and time again, but never Sergei von Zarevich. It's all been leading to this moment. Don't assume the suffering of the past was for nothing. God guides all things toward a good end. Not all people see justice in their own day, 
nor their children in their day. But one day, all wrongs will be put right. We've been waiting for it, and that day has come. It was fate that led you here, Henry. I know you are the white angel of prophecy, and I think you do, too. Henry's head hung low. He felt the truth of Davian's words. "'That's what I've been trying to tell you, man,' Apollo said from his scabbard. "'You're right,' Henry lifted his head. "'The prophecies are true. The cards, the songs, all of it.' Navarra's eyes lit up. "'The prophecy! That's right! How could we forget? We don't need to spend time scouting the castle. We know exactly where to find Irina because we know exactly where Strahd will be. The last card, Rowan said. The beast. He sits on his dark throne waiting for you. The throne room. And if that's where Strahd is, that's where he has Irina, Navarra said. Thank you, Davian. We needed that encouragement. If Strahd and Irina are together, Henry said, how do we get her to the heart? Navarra scrunched her nose. I have an idea. A really risky idea. Gostomir has been showing me how to turn a charm. So I was thinking, if Strahd tries to charm me, I should be able to turn it back on him. You think you can charm Strahd with his own magic? Rowan asked. I think so. That's a huge risk, Henry said. How long have you been practicing this? Navarra bit her lower lip. Gostomir showed me a little last night. Last night? Henry's voice raised an octave. You're telling me you want us to risk our necks on something you learned last night? And also once at the wood fane. Please let me try. What other options do we have? Victor, who had been scavenging and eating snails while they were talking, looked over at them and snickered. "'Have anything you'd like to say?' Rowan asked the wizard. Victor shook his head and went back to finding snails. "'How likely is it that Strahd will try to charm you?' Henry asked Navarra. "'Weren't you saying earlier that you had convinced him not to charm you?' "'That was before,' Navarra said. "'Things have changed. "'After the incident at the Woodfane, he likely considers me a traitor.' I don't think it will take much for me to push him to do it. Let's just hope he doesn't try to bite you first, Rowan said. I'll think of something to say to him. Navarra shuffled her feet in the snow. We'll need to get Irina away from him, said Henry, or get him away from her. That will be the hard part, Navarra said. If I manage to charm him, it will only last for about a minute. In that time, I'll have to get Irina to the heart. It sounds like a mad plan, Rowan said, planting her spear in the sand. But we are in Barovia, and madness seems to be the driving force around here. What do we have to lose? How are we going in? Henry asked. Through the front door? I have an idea, Rowan smiled. Remember that large stained glass window? It leads right to the throne room. I think I can smash through it if I turn into a giant eagle. Yes, Navarra said. Henry and I can ride you in. You have all the fun, Henry said. I wish I could turn into an animal for once. You shouldn't be complaining, Henry, Rowan said. You have your own wings. I just think it would be cool to be an eagle, he said. Victor approached and put a hand on Henry. I still think you're going to your doom, but if you insist... He plucked something that looked like a caterpillar cocoon from a tree branch and cast a spell. Instantly, Henry transformed into a giant eagle. Hey! Rowan shouted. Navarra clapped her hands in amazement. Wow, Henry! I guess you'll be taking us in. Henry gave a caw, and Navarra hopped on his back. Come on, Rowan! No time to lose. Rowan shook her head, but climbed aboard. I'm coming with you, Davian said. 
I've got my crossbow and a new health potion from Muriel. And we have our stakes, Rowan said, turning to him. Davian, have you heard from Esmeralda? Did the ravens give her our note? She got it all right. She left the tower before I did. I think she's already on her way to the castle. Madness, Rowan said. If she wants to charge ahead and get herself killed, that's her choice. But it would have been nice to have another helping hand. I'm glad you're coming, Davian, Navarra said. How about you, Victor? Victor had a handful of snails and smiled lackadaisically. I'm staying right here. When it's over, I'll try and give you all a good burial. He's hopeless, Rowan said. Henry cawed again and flapped his wings. He lifted off into the sky, flying high above the trees. The sun shone in the east straight ahead, casting the pink glow of dawn over the valley. Morning, Lord, be with us, Henry thought, soaring toward the golden orb. Wind whistled past his ears and ruffled his feathers as he beat his wings. They flew for twenty miles over the countryside, and a flood of memories washed over Henry's mind. In the distance lay the mournful village of Barovia, where he had first met Irina. Then there was the dark water of the Tser Pool, where Madame Eva's cards had set them on their path. The town of Volaki lay behind them, and Henry remembered Baron Volakovich breaking wind at the festival of the blazing sun. To the west lay the withering vineyards of the Martikov's winery, and he thought of happier times. He saw the bridge of Solanka Pass, and remembered a cold night spent in a tower. He saw the beacon of Argen Vostolt, still shining with a last glimmer of hope. To the south, Mount Gacchus loomed up through the mist, and finally, to the east, storm clouds were gathering over Castle Ravenloft. The fortress's ominous walls grew closer with every passing minute, reminding Henry that this was their journey's end. Trepidation coursed through Henry's body as the image of a rising sun in the stained-glass window drew nearer. Rain began falling from the dark clouds, and thunder rumbled. Henry kept a lookout for the skeletal dragon, but did not see it. He felt Navarra and Rowan holding on tight as they tore through the rain. He took in a deep breath, closed his eyes, and smashed through the window pane. Navarra and Rowan fell from his back as he landed, his talons scraping on the stone. As Henry shook off the glass and rainwater, he saw Davian land on the window sill. At the south end of the hall, the throne was turned to face them. Upon it sat the Count of Barovia, like the implacable statue of a merciless god, brooding over the anguish wrought by his own malice. Irina sat at Strahd's feet, wearing a sheer gown that provoked the imagination more than concealed her body from the lustful gaze of her captor. A thick chain extended from the gem-encrusted collar around her neck to the unyielding grip of the vampire's fist. Irina looked out at her friends with sorrow carved across her face, and she remained silent. Strahd's hateful eyes seemed to pierce Henry's very soul. Rowan dispelled Victor's magic over Henry, and he transformed back into himself. Henry's heart pounded as he walked toward the dais, gauging his stride as Apollo had taught him, walking like Sergei. Then he pulled the sword from its sheath, and sunlight filled the room. Hello, Brody, Henry said. Strahd held up his hand against the light, and his eyes went wide, it was the first time Henry had ever seen him lose his composure. No, Strahd gasped. It cannot be. You are Henry Gibson, son of a peasant fisherman. I killed Sergei long ago, and his body lies in a tomb under this very castle. That sword was destroyed. Funny how things turned out, isn't it? Henry said. You murdered your brother to gain eternal life. Yet Sergei is more alive now than you have been in the past four hundred years. Strahd's lip twitched. So what if you are, Sergei? All the more reason I should kill you. You took everything from me. 
our mother's affections, the flower of my youth, my dreams for a future, and finally the only woman I wanted, my beloved Tatiana. I went to war so you could finish your studies. I avenged our father's death while you played at our mother's apron strings. The scars on my soul paid for your innocence. But no matter. I killed Sergei once. I can do it again. Henry clenched his jaw. Shall I turn around so you can stab me in the back like you did on Sergei's wedding day? You speak of things you do not understand, Strahd said. The truth of what happened that day is far more complicated than you suggest. No, the truth is simple. You were determined to hate Sergei no matter what he did. He looked up to you. He was always on your side no matter how badly you treated him. And you betrayed him. He betrayed me first when he stole Tatiana. Bullshit! You just couldn't stand the thought of him and Tatiana being happy together. Strahd snarled dangerously. Do you want to know what will become of Irina? He tugged on her chain. After I drain every drop of her blood on our wedding night, and she becomes mine for all of eternity, she will have only two responsibilities. First, satisfying my every carnal desire, and second, torturing whatever is left of you for the rest of your pathetic existence. Hot anger rose in Henry's chest, but he collected himself. They still needed Navara to work her magic. Rowan stepped up beside Henry. Strahd now focused his attention upon her. Another young von Zarevich I recently thought was dead. This is shaping up to be quite a family reunion. But I will not make the same mistake I did at Yester Hill. Your coffin is quite gone, and when I kill you this time, you will be dead for good. I don't think so, Rowan said. I'm not the wolf you fought when we first met. This time you will be the one begging for your life. Before you turn into an animal and try to kill me, you should know something. Right now I am concentrating on a spell, a magical wall of force down in the catacombs. This wall is the only thing separating two men from each other, your father and another dusk elf by the name of Casimir. Can you imagine how hungry a vampire gets after not feeding for twenty years? Can you imagine what would happen if I were to lose my concentration? Rowan's heart hammered in her breast. Could Strahd really have Casimir? Or was it a ploy to prevent her from attacking? Doubt began to gnaw at the pit of her stomach. Strahd continued to berate her. You are a disgrace to the family name. An elf, a half-breed, a bastard. Even now, Rahadin's memory cries out for your blood. You killed your own uncle. How dare you! You are in no position to chastise me, Rowan's voice rose. Rahadin chose his fate. I only fought him to survive. That's the same reason I've come to fight you. You are a cancer on this land, and neither I nor anyone I love can have peace until you are gone. The good people of Barovia have suffered long enough. Strahd's eyes narrowed. Rowan... I once thought you had the potential to become a worthy successor. I was wrong. You are nothing but a bitch like your mother. Rowan clenched her fists around her spear, but stopped when Navara put a hand on her arm. Navara could tell that Strahd had been avoiding her gaze, but now he turned to her, and the anger on his face gave way to bitter sadness. This was the unkindest cut of all, he said in a strained voice. Let the gods judge how dearly I loved you. And for what? Cruel treachery. All your sweet words about redemption, about forgiveness, about hope, about love. Every tender embrace and every kiss. Lies. No, Navara said, holding back a torrent of emotions. I knew from the moment you left that you had betrayed me. His mouth turned up in disgust. 
It was no coincidence that the very day I showed you the dragon's skull, you should steal it and use it against me. Your unreasoning obsession with that fay will be your undoing. A part of Navarra wanted to explain herself, and tell him there was still time to repent. But she needed to focus on saving the prisoner at his feet. She needed to be strong for Irina. As Navarra walked toward Strahd, the fringes of her hair changed from the copper tone of autumn to the blazing red of summer. This was a time for boldness. Navara, Strahd said with longing. You could have had it all. You would have been the crown jewel of Castle Ravenloft, the most powerful and beautiful warlock the world has ever seen. But more than that, you would have been the first among my concubines. Navarra's watering eyes turned up to meet his. Can you be so blind? Are your eyes so inverted upon yourself that you cannot see my compassion for you? When you deceived me as Vasili, when you hanged Ismark, when you imprisoned me all night in a flooded dungeon, even when you tried to kill my friends, in all of it, I never cursed you. I never swore vengeance upon you. I've understood you better than you understand yourself. Strahd stood up. You are a mystery to me, Navara, and mysteries are dangerous. I can assure you of one thing. After tonight, you will never betray me again. Rowan watched as Navara ascended the steps of the dais and stroked the vampire's cheek with her hand. My lord, Navara said, how could you have doubted my loyalty? Everything I've done since leaving Castle Ravenloft has been to your advantage. Look. She gestured at Henry and Rowan. Now I have delivered my friends into your hands. Rowan gave a sidelong glance at Henry. Had it worked? Had Navarra charmed Strahd? Just then, the warlock's hands shot out, and a flash of light struck Rowan in the chest. The breath caught in her throat as her body stiffened solid, ice crystals forming on her skin. Rowan was paralyzed by the spell that Navara had cast. In the corner of her eye, she saw Henry try to rush forward, but Navara waved her hands again, and he too froze in place. Strahd walked down the dais, inspecting his new captives. They are my gift to you, Navara said. All I ask is that you don't harm them. I'd like to remain here and serve you freely, and I think, if you give me enough time, I could convince them to do the same. This was not part of the plan. Rowan wanted to shout, but all she could do was gape at the scene unfolding around her. Strahd kissed Navarra's hand. My love, I have missed you. I've missed you too. There was sincerity in Navarra's voice that Rowan found unnerving. Would it be all right if I take Irina to my old room? I'd like to speak with her alone. She doesn't understand the privilege of marrying you, and she just needs a bit of encouragement. Strahd smiled, and to Rowan's amazement, he handed the chain around Irina's neck to Navarra. As you wish, my love, he said. Then, without so much as a glance at anyone else, Navara took the chain and led Irina out of the room. Strahd turned to Henry and Rowan. Well, that was easier than I thought it would be. Guards! he barked. Coming up from the staircase at the other end of the room were four lumbering ghouls with gangly arms that reached to the floor. These will show you to your cells in the dungeon. I hope both of you enjoy your stay at Ravenloft until the wedding day. I will be... Strahd stopped mid-sentence. He looked confused at first, but then a wicked smile spread across his face. Navara, Navara, you clever girl. At that moment, the ice holding Rowan shattered. She and Henry were free. Rowan shivered, wondering if this had been Navara's plan all along. Strahd gave a slow clap. I must congratulate you on your ploy. But did you honestly think you stood a chance? Did you think Navara charming me could even the odds? 
did you think the consecration of the fanes could in any way diminish my powers? Sunlight will offer you no escape today. He nodded to the broken window. Outside, through the driving rain, hundreds of black shapes were flying above the turrets. Wraiths, like a swirling maelstrom of death. It would seem there are still some things you do not understand about the dark powers. Strahd drew his sword. This is my castle. This is my game. And now the game is afoot. Strahd waved his hand. Instantly, a brilliant suit of plate armor materialized around his body, snapping and buckling itself into place. One of the ghouls leaped at Rowan, but she spun and stabbed it through the chest. With a few strokes of Apollo's blade, Henry dispatched the other three. Strahd was still smiling. You know, Rowan, it is a shame that my concentration dropped when your friend charmed me. Navarra has just killed Casimir. Rowan bared her teeth. Run, Henry! she shouted, then transformed into a direwolf and charged at Strahd. Henry did not look back. He spread his wings and jumped out the window, passing the small raven on the ledge. Stay with Rowan! he yelled to Davian. The rain pelted on Henry's face as he flew upward. He could only pray that the wraiths would not intercept him. He could only pray that Navarra and Irina had made it to the heart. Circling around one of the corner bastions, he spotted them on the bridge that connected the north and south towers. Green flashes of magic were blasting from Navarra's hand, stemming a horde of skeletons that issued from the north tower to bar their crossing. The crystal heart was casting a red glow on the savage tumult. Henry swooped down and ploughed a swath through their ranks, sending a hail of bones careening onto the rooftop below. He landed in the doorway and called out through the storm, Irina, to me! Irina sprinted across the bridge as Navarra blasted the skeletons that tried to grab her. Irina ran all the way to Henry's arms and clutched him like she would never let go. "'I can't believe you're here,' she said. The chain and collar were still attached to her neck. Henry wrapped his shield around her slender frame, and together they turned to enter the north tower. As soon as they were inside, the whole tower began to shake. More skeletons were clambering up the stairs. Some of them were thrown down by the quaking. Then all the halberds hanging on the walls came to life and attacked. Guarding Irina with one hand and wielding Apollo in the other, Henry fended off the magical weapons. Then he looked up at the throbbing crystal heart that hovered in the open shaft. Irina, Henry said, whacking the haft of another halberd, will you marry me? You're asking now? Irina shouted. She dodged a flying axe head. There's no time to explain. I... Yes, yes, I'll marry you. Henry lifted Irina in his arms and flew to the heart. Landing on top of it, he kissed her. And when their lips met, there was a sound like shattering glass. The heart beneath their feet burst in every direction. But the shards of crystal had turned to great droplets of blood and showered everything in a crimson deluge. Henry beat his wings lifting them both into the air. As they hovered there in the shaft of the north tower, blood running down their faces, he felt the warmth of Irina's kiss and returned it more ardently than he ever had before. All Henry's life he had been waiting for this moment.